these equipotential surfaces can be drawn even on complicated fields, because all you really have to do is uh, draw the line perpendicular to the field at every point. So let's look at some crazy field. I'll kind of have one field lines coming in like that. Um, like that, and they kind of come in like that. And another one comes in like that. And we'll have the field pointing in that direction. Those are the field lines. So let's see, you could come here right down the center and say this is some potential. And that's an equipotential surface, because remember it sticks in the plane of the board. That's perpendicular, it's, it's equipotential because I'm always perpendicular to the field. Then you add another one next to it, might be kind of like this. And another one coming like that, might be kind of like that. And then um, as you get farther away, they're going to kind of have to start to curve to remain um, equipotential like that. And you know, you can sort of let your right brain go crazy. Or is it your left brain? I'm not sure. I guess this is both. I'm using my entire brain now. Mm, there you go. Oh, let's just stick one more in like that. You'll see why in a minute. So there you go. There's a bunch of equipotential surfaces. You could say, okay, let's make this one 10 volt, 9 volt, 8 volt, 7 volt, 6 volt, 5 volt, 4 volt, 3 volt, 2 volt. And if you move across any of those lines, you're always at the same potential. If you move between the lines, then the potential is changing, and that's because that's the field is in, um, is in that direction. So one reason you can take, you know, this is a complicated situation. I'm not, I'm not giving you the equations to describe this. I'm just drawing the field lines in a complicated situation. But we can still use it to do problems. Because what I want you to remember is that the potential, it's not equal to the energy. I'm going to draw an arrow to be vague. I'm not saying potential equals energy. You know that it doesn't. You know it equals potential energy per unit charge. But it's related to the energy. That's why we deal with potential. Some problems are easier done with energy. So let's imagine um, a charge of mass m and charge, that's kind of redundant, charge q, goes from point A to point B. Let's say it goes from here, and it just flies along somehow and gets to here under its own volition. All right, so this charge, mass m, charge q, goes from A to B and starts at rest. Okay. So how fast it be? So what you have to remember is that these are literally potentials. And if you take a potential and you multiply it by charge, you have potential energy. So if this thing is sitting here at rest and it's released and it flies along a field line and it ends up at B, you actually know how much energy it picked up because you know how much potential energy it lost. Right? In this case, it lost because it went, if it's a positive charge, it's definitely going to fly uh, along the field line. Right? So it's going to go this way. And its potential energy is going to go down from 9 down to 4. Okay? So delta U is going to be the potential it ended at, uh, 4 volts minus where it began. But you got to multiply it by Q. So it's going to be minus, or it's going to be uh, Q times 4 volts minus Q times <coughs> started at 9 volts. So the energy it lost is basically going to be <coughs> 5 volts times Q. <coughs> if you were given the actual charge in coulombs in the problem, you would be able to put it in joules if you wanted to. So the amount that you lose, well, that's equal to the, uh, you're going you're gonna to lose uh, 5 volts times Q. So you can say 5 volts times Q equals the kinetic that you gain. Okay. So it's going to start from rest. It's going to speed up and fly over here. That's going to be equal to 1 half mv squared. And that's the velocity at B right there. So if you were given a known mass, you could plug that in, and you could solve this for, for V and get it in meters per second. So a lot of times the reason we draw these equipotential surfaces is to think about how much energy does a charge have as we move around in here. 
So if you let one fly from A to B, you can think about how much kinetic energy does it gain. If I say I forced one to go from here to here, how much work did I do? Well, you just look at the difference in the potential. Okay. So that's one way these are useful. 